Hello everyone. Welcome to our course Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS Deep Dive, which covers in depth a deep dive for AKS and Kubernetes. This video is part of this course and will cover Lesson 4, Module 1, which is Introduction to Kubernetes and Containers Orchestration. This video is part of Module 1, Introduction to Application Modernization and Containers. And this is where the video is located in the current module. So let's start. Module 1, Lesson 4, Introduction to Kubernetes and Containers Orchestration. This lesson will cover challenges of managing containers and microservices. In previous lesson, we understand the modernization of application and how this may end up with a huge bunch of services. So we will understand the challenges that come to manage the containers and microservices. And then after that, we will understand and introduce what is the container orchestration tools. After that, we will get an overview about what is Kubernetes, and then the origins of Kubernetes and who is managing it now. Then after that, we will understand why Kubernetes, why we choose Kubernetes over the other orchestration tools. And then understanding Kubernetes on public cloud. And after that, we will understand some other orchestration tools in the market and then getting more information about the market share for the orchestration tools, including Kubernetes and other orchestration tools. Before we start, let me give you a quick introduction about myself. My name is Mohammed Radwan. I'm a developer technologies MVP and principal DevOps consultant. I have been doing software development for more than 17 years now, working on several projects for different enterprise customers across different regions and countries. For more info about me, you can review lesson one in module one. In previous lesson, we talked about the huge bunch of services based on the microservices or modernized architecture and how this may end up that every services went to a container. So I end up with a huge bunch of services that hosted in many containers. So the question now, how I am going to manage and orchestrate all this container and my application? The answer is by using container orchestrator. So what we mean by container orchestrator? So since we talk about that, we may end up with many containers and this container will run on nodes or virtual machines, then I need an orchestrator which can help me to understand which container will run on which virtual machine. Let's say, for example, my application on this container need to scale out. So I need to create more containers to run on this virtual machine or this node. So the container orchestrator will be responsible to create a new container, which including my application to scale out my application on the free virtual machine, which has more resources available. So the container orchestrator will be responsible to orchestrate all the containers and run them on the nodes. So it can start, stop, scale out application, reschedule, create containers, etc. as needed. A great example of container orchestrator is Kubernetes. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is an open source container orchestrator designed to automate deployment, scaling, and the management of containerized application. Originally developed by Google, coming from the Porg project, donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation in 2014. So just imagine Kubernetes is just a bunch of virtual machine that run bunch of containers and expose an API to manage this virtual machine and these containers. So I can manage that or interact with that using the Kubernetes dashboard. So through the API or maybe using a command line tools like kubectl command line or even using the RESTful APIs. So the main idea, these virtual machine and the containers are managed through the API. I can interact with them using the API. So I can deploy my application easily using a standard API. I can scale the application, create load balance, declare target state or what we call desired state. So it doesn't have to be in instructions, but it is declarative, which means that I can specify all what I need 
speed and Kubernetes or the container orchestration will reach the desired state at the end. Also, through the API, I can enable auto restart, auto replication, auto scaling, or many other features. So you can just think of now, this is the Kubernetes and how does it work in a very abstract definition or idea. So the origins of Kubernetes, it come live as a successor to Google prog to Google's Porg projects and donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation in 2014. Google has been running containerized workload in production for more than a decade now. So everything run inside Google it just run in a container. And the system that run these containers and manage all these container called Porg. So Porg is a container-oriented cluster management system by Google. Many of the developers at Google working on Kubernetes were formerly developers on the Borg projects. So Google incorporate the best ideas from Borg in Kubernetes, and they have addressed some pain points that user identified with Borg over the years. So in Kubernetes, it helped me to deploy my application quickly and predictably. I can scale the application on the fly, roll out new feature very easily, limit the hardware usage to the required resource only and best utilization. Top use cases is a stateless microservice deployments and it's evolving for stateful applications. So Kubernetes has different feature. Portability, it can work on public, private, hybrid, or multi-cloud. Extensible, which means that I can develop or use a developed extension by the community. This is why we call it an ecosystem. Self-healing, which means that it can auto-placement, auto-restart, auto-replication, and auto-scaling application running on the Kubernetes. Why to choose Kubernetes? It can be run anywhere, on-premises, public clouds, Google, Azure, or AWS, Amazon Web Services. Also, we can consider Kubernetes as an abstraction layer. It means that instead of interacting with different components or servers, I can just interact with Kubernetes API no matter what, if the Kubernetes on Google or Azure or AWS or even on my premises, which mean that I can have a very good abstraction layer working with my application, which mean that it can be then run out of the box on any Kubernetes cluster, no matter what the Kubernetes existing on which system, because it use one API, which is the Kubernetes API. Avoid vendor lock, as much as possible by not using a vendor specific API or services. Because again, I using a Kubernetes, which is open source. And as we explain, it is now donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation from 2014, which is a non-profit organization, except where Kubernetes provide an abstraction. So I'm not interacting with any vendor specific API like storage or load balancer, this will be just the Kubernetes API. For the Kubernetes on public clouds, most of the top cloud provider support native support for Kubernetes. So there is other container orchestration tools. So Kubernetes is not the only orchestration tools in the market, but we say that Kubernetes won the container orchestration war. So according to the study by OpenStack survey report in April 2016, which shows that Kubernetes has the largest market share in container orchestration tool with huge gross market every year. Behind the growth, Kubernetes is the leading orchestrator shaping the future of app development with increased portability by 42% and 45% scalability and 50% of agility. And this is published by Cloud Native Computing Foundations. So when we look at the popularity of Kubernetes, According to the last study by Cloud Native Computing Foundation survey, that 73% responded that they using containers in production, with the remaining of 27% planning to use them in the future, and 89% using containers for proof of concept as well as testing, 85% and development 86%. As for container management tools, Kubernetes remains the leaders 
with 83% up from 77% respondents, which shows that Kubernetes is the leading for container orchestration in the market share. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching this video. If you have any question or inquiry, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Thank you.